In this video, I want to show you the subgrid layers technique and the subgrid turbulences uh, technology of Dipit Effects, which is pretty unique. So you can see I've already prepared a simple scene. It's actually it's the default scene. I just changed the emitter shape to a box and I injected some pressure here and some temperature, it's default, and some smoke. And all this for nine frames as set in the duration here and for all of these emissions. All right, and this is actually the result. You can see it's 40 by 40 by 40, so really low resolution. It calculates pretty quickly and we can see a nice little explosion and then the smoke billowing up. All right, so let's just have a rendering look. We have pretty dense uh, render settings here and well, not much to see. Yeah? It's just low res. All right. So what I now want is I want to keep this motion, this overall motion, as much as possible for the high resolution rendering. If I would now increase the grid cells for uh, the rendering, for example, or now in the editor, this would not only take longer to calculate, it would also most probably not conform to the low resolution shape. Well, of course, in this, uh, well, very simple example, it may not differ that much. It scales pretty good uh, in Dippet Effects, the fluid simulation, but, well, we can do maybe better. And there's one thing that I want. I don't want to take it much longer. And I don't want to take it uh, very much memory. So let's say I wanted four million cells now here in uh, in rendering and so keep in the shape. How can we do this? Well, that's where the subgrid layers technology and the subgrid turbulences come into play. So we go into the simulation tab of the solver, into the turbulence sub tab, and we now have a setting for the subgrid layers here. And when I now use one layer, you can already see this much more conforms to the emitter shape now because we have just now doubled the resolution. We can see this here. We have cells in editor 40 by 40 by 40. This results in uh, 64,000 cells. And now we have subdivided the uh, space with a subgrid layer. And we now have 512,000 grid cells. Well, that's pretty cool. All right, so when I now play the simulation, you can see this looks much smoother now. And we get also a nice billowing mushroom as we did with the uh, low resolution. So this is quite um, actually the same as the low resolution, although we already now get more details by just adding a subgrid layer. So this is a pretty nice way to quickly uh, add more detail with the subgrid layer. And we have 512,000 cells here in the editor. And we're going to now double it again. Well, we now have 4 million cells here in the editor. And as you can see, it's no problem for me to play it now in the editor. I still get a nice feedback, 1 frames per second. And we get even more details and, and more smoothness than before. But we still keep the actual low resolution simulation. Like this. All right, so this looks already nice. But, well, <laughs> although this looks nice, we don't have much turbulences or details in there, although we have dub uh, well, doubled the resolution twice and we have 4 million cells. Because it still depends on the low resolution simulation. But as you can see, it is really fast to calculate. So you can use subgrid layers actually at any time just for the sake of increasing the visual resolution. All right, but we also want some turbulences in there. And that's where 
the vorticity particles come into play for us. So we go into the emitter, into the vorticity particles subtap, and we now use the target layer and set it to separate layer 2, so our last layer that we have uh, generated there. And let's just create about, well, let's take 300. All right, so we have 300 vorticity particles now emitted here, and we can now use them to simply add turbulences to our subgrid layer. Now let's just change, I want to change this to Gaussian here. Maybe increase the radius. And, well, we keep the transport field subdivided. So this means that the particles will be transported by the uh, second subgrid layer instead of the simulation layer, the low resolution layer. All right, so let's just try this now for now. Uh, you can see, boom, there's already so much subgrid turbulences generated. Let's, I, I turn off the drawing of the vorticity particles so we can see the smoke. So you can see, oh, there is much more detail than in there now. All right, but this is so strong, it kind of destroys our overall motion much more than we want it to. So I can simply use the unsubdivided field, so the low resolution space for the transport of the vorticity particles. And this will reduce the uh, amount of uh, differences because the particles are still dominated by the uh, low resolution flow. Well. Here we go. Of course, we also need to take care of the settings because everything is up to the settings. If the settings don't fit, well, you can't do anything about it. And here we go. There's probably too much of the subgrid turbulences active. Well, let's wait. All right, so this is really too much. So what we can do now is we reduce simply the intensity. That should help us. Now this looks much better now. Let's just turn on the vorticity particles for, for us to visualize. So you can see we don't have many particles now here at the top so there are not many turbulences generated because turbulence are always generated where the particles are but as it now uh, is billowing these particles from below will now come upward and they will generate more particles uh, up there and more turbulences but of course it would have been much better if we had set it up uh, so the particles are distributed everywhere so we get also subgrid turbulences at any point that we want. Just turn this off now. And remember, we are at 4 million cells now. And you can see where the particles are. We have nice subgrid turbulences generated here from the particles. So we can simply increase our, our simulations, our low resolution simulations, and better plan what the final smoke will look like or the final motion and simply then add subgrid turbulences for more details, for more visual details. Now we could play with the shader and work it out so we get an, a very nice output from that. But you can already see it is super easy to generate turbulences later on in the subgrid layers with uh, the debit effects uh, subgrid turbulences technique.